Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you guys could join us tonight. I apologize for being unavailable last week, but to make up for it, we're going to be here this week and next week. That's what we's going to do. That's what we's going to do. So let us um, start off with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, God, we just thank you on today. God, we thank you for each and every one of your wonderful blessings. And Lord, we ask right now as we go forth into this study, oh God, God, that you would be with us. God, that you would give revelation knowledge, oh God, that you would reveal yourself in a new way to us. Lord, I thank you for every person that's on the line, that's on their way. Lord, I even thank you for the opportunity to be used as a vessel for your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you, God. Amen. 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 So here we are. Miracle signs and wonders on week two. So I'm going to um, share my screen with you. So that we can get our presentation started. Let's see. All right, just one second. Okay, all right. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. All right, okay, so miracle signs and wonders. So let's review from week one. We said, what are miracles? Miracles are events which unmistakably involve an immediate and powerful action of God designed to reveal his character or purpose. There are so many mentions of miracles in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament um, that we can reference, but simply stated, it's extraordinary events caused by God, which has religious significance. And we also, we identify uh, the grand miracles of the scriptures. And the grand miracles are the scriptures that are essentially the foundation for our faith. Without these miracles, we can't call our faith Christian. Amen. And the three grand miracles of the scripture are the miracle of creation, the miracle of the incarnation, and the miracle of the resurrection. And I apologize, my scriptural references um, fell off. But these are our grand miracles of scriptures. These, this, these are the founding blocks of our faith. The miracle of creation. God stepped into nothing and created everything. The miracle of the incarnation where God became flesh. And there is a great argument whether the incarnation was at the point that Mary became pregnant, or if the incarnation was when she actually gave birth to Jesus. This is something that theologians argue about, which is, which is the actual point of incarnation. But the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter if it's the birth or if it's when she actually got pregnant, because it was still a miracle. She did not become pregnant by physical means. She became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And the birth of that creation was Jesus. So that's the miracle in itself. And then we have the miracle of the resurrection, where Jesus was tried, crucified, died on a cross, borrowed in a buried in a borrowed man's tomb. And in three days, just as he prophesied, he rose. He rose. He came back. He came back. So those are the building blocks, the foundation of our faith. There's not another religion that has this claim, not one. Other religions, their, <laughs> their saviors are dead, Buddha dead. Amen. Over there, y'all, the nation of Islam, they treat Farrakhan like he, he got. But guess what? He's in the flesh. He's going to die one day. Amen. So we are the only ones that have this claim and we have the good news that he's coming back again for us. 
we also discussed that there are three conditions necessary for a miracle to take place. First, you need a problem. You need to have faith. And without a doubt, you need God. When you have those three, a miracle can happen. A miracle can take place. So on tonight, the homework was identifying with miracles. How can we identify with miracles? So I asked everybody to try to find a miracle that they identify with and speaks to their life. Is there anybody on the line that wants to share um, the miracle that they identify with? I'll share. Um, uh, I talked with Sister Denise last week about um, the miracle. <coughs> excuse me. That I identify with is, um, I think it's in Second Kings, um, about Elisha and the widow, and I talked about how, um, you know, she followed the prophet's instructions and she didn't really have nothing but a little bit of oil. Um, and he told her to find as many jars that she could find in her house, um, and even borrow some if she needed to. And, you know, and that oil, when they began to pour the oil, it just kept pouring. And so she was able to have enough to sustain because she was a widow. It was very hard for widows at that time. And, um, she was able to sell the oil to sustain her family. And I just said, you know, I identify with that miracle because, you know, many times I found myself in a circumstance where I just didn't have enough. Um, I, I just, you know, don't have enough money, don't have, you know, don't have enough resources. Um, but God allows me to use what I have or what he has already given me to obtain wealth. So um, I'm able to design for people. I'm able to um um, use my business, <coughs> my business and my creativity in order to sustain and be a blessing to my family. And so, um, I feel like, you know, when I'm down, when I don't have, when I'm down to my last, the Lord will just send me a project, a client my way, like, you know, and I don't really have yeah. to, and I'm like, that came right on time. <laughs> so that's the, that's the uh, miracle that, um, I identify with. Amen. Amen. I, and, I, and I love that because if the truth be told at one time or another, we can all identify with that woman where we just don't have enough and we can't figure out how, how it's going to stretch, how it's going to work. But she was obedient to the prophet. And when she was obedient to the prophet, God blessed in a marvelous way. He blessed in a marvelous way. So is there anyone else? who wants to share the miracle that they identify with? Amen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share the miracle that I identify with. And when I thought about it, there were, so, there were several, several miracles that I thought about um, that I really identified with and I chose this one, Jonah and the great fish, amen. So um, as I give you the background for this and my story, I'm gonna use visual because miracles are visual, very visual accounts. I mean, you you can hear about them, but to see them is more in. It's more impactful. So I wanted to use some visuals. So here we see Jonah in the water, about to be swallowed by a great fish. And like Jonah, I heard God clearly calling me. I heard God calling me. That's the lady on the left. I heard God calling me. I heard him saying some stuff to me. And then on the second picture, I'm like, who me? I know better. And God kept speaking to me over and over and over again. 
And I'm like, Lord, you playing. I'm a mess. I'm a wretch undone. It, it can't be me. Lord, you know how hard I used to party? How hard I like to party? You know I like to drink, Lord. Every once in a while, I like to smoke a, a, a flavored cigar, Lord. I'd like to get out there and get my boogie on. Lord, I want to slap the next person that say the wrong thing to me. You ain't calling me to do nothing. I know better. I know better. And I kept rejecting what he was saying to me. So like the little lady on the bottom, I wasn't trying to listen. I wasn't trying to listen. Not at all. I wasn't trying to hear it. La, 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 la. I was not trying to hear it. But yeah, go ahead and laugh at me, Sister Tawana, because it's funny. But he kept talking to me here. He kept, I kept saying, who, me? And I kept not wanting to listen. And I knew the louder he talked, the more I kept not wanting to listen. So I did what um, most people do in my position. I took off running. I took off running. I was doing a Flojo sprint that could not be beat. Running, running, telling the Lord it was impossible. Who am I to be telling God that he can't do something with me? How, how, how can I say that I, it's, it's not going to happen for me? Who am I to say that? The guy who can do anything with anybody. He, he chose me, but the truth of the matter is I did not feel worthy of the place he was calling me to. I didn't feel worthy of the place. I was like, nobody's going to listen to me. People are going to judge me. All they're going to remember is who I used to be. So Lord, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, Jonah took off from an assignment just because he didn't like the people. I took off because I ain't like myself. <laughs> I didn't like the idea of myself being at that position. And just like Jonah, the Lord did not play any games with me. Jonah got thrown off a ship, fell into the belly of a whale for three days. So he suffered for three days um, I wasn't as smart as Jonah. It took me months before I got my life together. And you know what the Lord did to me? While I was trying to run, the Lord took what was precious to me. He took my sleep. Mm -hmm. He took my sleep. He took my sleep. I was walking around like a zombie for months. And the reason you see those two times on the screen is because that's the time he will wake me up every morning. Three and 3.33. Three and 3.30. I could, if I woke up, I knew when I looked at the clock what time it was. It was one of those two times. I knew what time it was. The Lord took my sleep for months. And I'll tell y'all what, I love to sleep. I enjoy sleep, okay? He kept taking my sleep and I would be awake and I would not go back to sleep. Can you imagine being up over 12, 13, 14 hours in a day? Because the Lord is taking your sleep because I'm not being obedient, because I'm not listening, because I won't just submit to the call that he's placing on my life. And here I am, a modern day Jonah, not listening suffering but it got to be too much and I finally said you know what Lord I'm gonna submit I'm gonna submit I can't I can't do it anymore um I have to listen I had someone come to me and tell me the Lord will stop beating you up if you just listen if you just accept what he's saying if you just accept, and I did, I submitted and I accepted the assignment. This is me preaching my trial sermon. A year after 
I finally decided to stop fighting with the Lord. Actually, two years because I had to go to seminary. Two years after that. Because I went to my pastor and said, okay, this is what the Lord said. And she confirmed. So I was really glad because that let me know that I was not out of order. But my pastor confirmed the call on my life. Because when God calls you, like I said, you, you hear it. You're rejected. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to, you don't even think you're worthy. But what God showed me, he has showed her. And I was grateful. So that's the miracle that I identify with. Jonah and the whale. And to be truthful, any of us on this line here, if you in a position where you are preaching, you're in leadership, or if God has called you to start a ministry, you already know that our first inclination is not to go, you know what, Lord? I accept that assignment. It's not. But I'm so grateful that the Lord deals with us in such a way that when we finally come, we're so grateful. We don't know how to do nothing else but just go ahead with the assignment. Amen? Amen. Is there anyone else? that wants to share the miracle or a miracle that they identify with? Any miracle too, any miracle in the Bible that, or that you just, that's something that really spoke to you. And, and yes, Minister Bailey, every person in the Bible that was first called denied their call, every one, everyone. There's some preachers I know right now. They will tell you, yep, I'm Jonah. Amen. 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 So there's a um, another um, miracle. I was talking to someone um, during the week. And I said I was teaching about signs, miracles, and wonders. And I asked, I said, what miracle do you think that you identify with? And uh, the person said they identified with Noah. And I was like, with Noah? And I said, okay. And I said, tell me why. And he, he owns, he owns a, um, actually a very successful business. He owns a very successful business. And he said that when he initially wanted to start the business, people laughed at him. They said, it was it was a dumb move. They said he should you know keep because he worked a corporate job and made good money, made six figures, and he wanted to do a startup. He wanted to do a startup, and they told him it would probably never work. You're not going to make the same money. Why would you do that? Don't quit your job. He said, but the Lord was giving him how he needed to start his business, what he needed to do, and it. On the surface, it did sound a little crazy because he told him to quit his job. He told him to call five specific people to ask for money to start his business. He told him to rent out a space in Newark in a building that he had never been to before. And he said that one, if you ask those five people, they're going to give you exactly the money that you asked for. And he said, one of them will give you money above what you asked for. His wife didn't want him to quit his job. His family didn't want him to quit his job. But he kept, the Lord kept telling him, you are going to be fine. This is going to be success, successful. And it's going to launch other businesses. And he did it. And he did it. And I said, okay. I said, I, I got that. I said, but I said, you know, it rained. And it was a flood. And everybody died. And he said, once he quit his job, everything in his life went downhill. <laughs> he said everything. He said he quit his job. He said a month later, his wife, his wife lost her job. He said they had issues in their home where like stuff was breaking down to the left and the right. He got so scared. He tried to go back to his old job and he, he couldn't do it. He said, and the Lord clearly told him, I didn't tell you to do any of that. I told you I would sustain you. So he kept pressing forward. 
and pressing forward. And he said, the Lord gave him a time period. He said, and as the time period was ending, things started getting better. Things started getting brighter. And this, the business is very successful. He's opened up a second successful business. He works with very big name people, attorney, lawyers. I know Jay-Z is one of his clients. Beyonce is one of his clients. So he's doing very well. He said, but he just felt like he was in a spot where he had no support except the Lord. And so he said, that's why he felt like Noah. He said that he was all, he was like, he was all by himself, all by himself, having to build his big ship and get everything he needed for it and hoping that everybody would get on that needed to get on. Amen. Is there anybody else? Who wants to share a miracle that they identify with? If not, I'm going to move forward. So I already asked which miracle speaks to your life. So the one thing we want to recognize is that there are several things that need to be pregnant, that need to be present in order for the there to be a biblical miracle. Oh, hold on. Somebody just put into the chat. Oh, um, if it's okay, I'm going to share this story. I don't know who's on the iPhone, who's on the iPhone, but I'm going, I'm going to share this story. Leticia. 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 Hey, Leticia. Um, she says she identifies with the woman with the issue of blood. She said her faith granted her the miracle to stop the bleeding. My God, she said, my last pregnancy, my umbilical cord was at 1% rear umbilical cord, one vessel and an artery. Yes, and with that type of umbilical cord, you only have one kidney and or a hole in your heart. When I went to get an ultrasound, they couldn't see her heart because she was moving. <laughs> she was moving too fast. Listen, um, I'm aware of that condition. So I know that that that's a big issue. I would put my oil on and pray. And at the last ultrasound, it was no issue of her heart. And she was good. And she has both kidneys. Look at God. Because your faith. Your faith made you whole. Glory to God. Your faith. And we have to have we have to have that faith that God will move and do any and everything on our behalf. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that. So as I was saying, there are several things that are present from biblical miracles. One, whoops, an act of faith, an act of obedience. Two, a show of faith. And three, a move of God. When you got those three, you got yourself a biblical miracle. So what I wanted to do is give you an example of a biblical miracle that has all three of these. Jesus turns water into wine, his very first miracle. So the, the, um, Scriptural references, John, the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee, and Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Now, let's refer back to week one. In order to have a miracle, you got to have what? A problem. Okay? And woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. That is the act of faith. That's the show of faith. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. 
So they fill them to the brim. There is the act of obedience. Jesus said, go fill the water pots. They didn't argue with him. They didn't say, is this enough? They didn't start asking a bunch of questions. They just filled what was there. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did another act of obedience. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. The beautiful thing about this miracle is that the people that received a blessing hadn't even asked for anything. They hadn't really asked for anything. They probably didn't even know that the wine had run out. But they were blessed just because Jesus was in the building. They were blessed just because Jesus was in the building. They were blessed because the servants were obedient to his request. They were blessed because his mother had a show of faith and believed that her son would take care of this problem. They believed and they acted on it. They acted on it. They moved on it. And the people around them were blessed. And you will see that's a running theme with um, a lot of the miracles in the Bible that more than one person is always going to be blessed. More than one person, because the person that receives the blessing is blessed. Then the people that hear about the miracle are blessed because it could increase their faith. It could in introduce them to Jesus. So it's a, it's, a, it's a ripple effect, blessing from miracles. Think about it. When you hear something good, when you hear about something good, you want to be a part of it. Amen. If somebody told you right now, a hot chicken spot opened up in Plainfield, right? The chicken is banging. The chicken is church chicken fry delicious. Okay. So everybody's like, oh, maybe I should run down and buy me some chicken. So everybody runs down to go buy the chicken at the church service. Now, you get blessed because you heard somebody talking about the chicken. You get blessed, you eat. The person that's selling the chicken gets blessed because you patronize their business. Amen. And then what do you do? You tell the next person so somebody else could get blessed. That's how miracles work. That's how they work. It's a ripple effect. And it's beautiful. And that's how God operates. You, it's not in a silo. It's not in a silo. But the miracles are there so it can be spread out to other people. When you hear about it, you can't keep it to yourself. Every miracle in the Bible had an eyewitness. And every miracle has a testimony to it. Everyone, there's a testimony. Jesus, there's 35 recorded miracles of Jesus in the Bible. 35 recorded. 35 recorded. That's not saying he didn't do more because I believe in my heart of hearts. Of course, he did more miracles, but only 35. And even those 35 are so powerful. They're so powerful that we have to understand that this wasn't, it, it wasn't even um, an everyday thing that he did these miracles, but every miracle that was done, every miracle had a ripple effect. It had a ripple effect. It was a blessing to whoever received the miracle and the people that were around them. Amen. 
Does anybody have any questions or any comments? Just to your point about the, the miracles that were reported, I can't remember which gospel says this. It might be John um, towards the end. I'm not sure. I have to look and double check. Thank you, baby. Uh, but it says, you know, the, the gospel writer says, you know, we can't write everything um, that, that Jesus performed while he was here on earth. They said, because there's not enough books or there's not enough, there's just not enough time to say everything that he did. So they, they chose the most important ones. So he did many more. Yeah. Amen. And the beautiful thing was, is that Jesus passed that power on to the disciples. So there, there are people, there are people and I'm, I'm amazed as I'm doing my study um, that don't believe that the disciples perform miracles, that it was put into the text just to make it sound better. Amazing. Even though Jesus said that he would give them power, even greater power, that's the word, that he would give them even greater power they perform these miracles. They perform these miracles. They were able to heal. Amen. They were able to raise the dead. Amen. So they were able to perform these miracles based on Jesus providing the power to them. And the truth of the matter is we have that same power in our hands. We can touch the sick and they're healed. We could speak the word and people are healed. And some of us as Christians are living beneath our privilege of the power, the dunamis power that God has given us. Amen? Is there anyone that has a question or a comment? Yes, Mr. Billy, we got that same Holy Ghost, that same power. So many eyewitnesses to what was done and people still don't believe in miracle signs and wonders. There's Christians that don't believe some of the miracles that were done. It, it, it's, it's amazing to me. How do, you, how do you follow a religion? How do you follow in faith and not believe every part of it? Not believe in every part of it. That's, it's dangerous. Because that means you will bend and shape the word to fit. Amen. I believe every miracle. I believe there were 10 plagues. I believe that Jesus put the words to the Ten Commandments on the tablets at Sinai. I believe it. I believe that the bush was burning and it talked. I believed it. I believe that the Red Sea parted and there was a wall of water on the left and the right. I believe it. I believe when Aaron picked up that rod and stretched out, it was a snake. And when he picked it up again, it was a rod again. I believe his hand was leprous. Amen. I believe the miracles. How can we say we're Christians and say we don't believe it? Amen. Amen. Anyone else with a, a comment? Or something they want to share? I just want to, you know, like how a lot of people think, you know, we're never going to experience like biblical miracles or, you know, we're not going to experience the level of miracles that will happen in the Bible. But I believe that we do still see them. Um, there are so many things that are unexplainable that happen to us that are just major Um you know, and people can try to explain that scientifically or like circumstantially, like, you know, they, they can try <coughs> to explain them. But the, the truth of the matter is that there are some things that can't be explained. And all you can say is, but God. And um, it's going back to what you originally said. There are three things required for a miracle. A problem, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, faith and God. And that means that a miracle could happen at any time and every day, you know, because we have, we're going to have a problem. Okay. <laughs> you're going to live, you live long enough. You're going to have a problem. We have problems every day. 
So, um, you know, it's a miracle. We, we may not even see some of the things that God does, you know, some of the accidents that he prevents us from. Sometimes we get to see them, but sometimes we don't. We have no idea because we went the other way. We avoided an accident or he dispatched angels to just cover yeah. us and protect us or, you know, our children, all this stuff. Like, so, um, you know, I, it goes back to like, just Lord, help if you if you are not believing God for a miracle, ask God to help you with your unbelief, you know, just, you know, to, to ask God to grow your faith. And it's true. Faith comes by hearing. So when you hear when God did something for somebody else, it really, really helps your faith. So it's good to be around hearing around people that um, know the Lord and around people that are going to encourage you because people that don't know the Lord, they're going to be like, man, man, forget that stuff. None of that stuff is real, but and you'll start to believe it. So you got to surround yourself with believers. <clears throat> Amen. And and um thank you for that, Minister Bailey. It um it amazes me how people will discount things um that um are miracles. When I was um doing my study for this, um I learned that the um Catholic Church, you know, they operate different. They have a criteria, an actual criteria of what can be considered a miracle. And one of the things for a miracle, let's say a miracle where somebody says they are, they are healed, um, the person has to be sick, not in a state of improving, not in a state of treatment. They cannot, um, what was the other, um, They um, the healing has to be immediate. It has to be immediate. It can't be something that happens over, you know, like a week or a month. It has to be immediate. And it has to be um, confirmed by a medical specialist. Now, the last time I checked, God did not need anybody to confirm a healing. He didn't need anybody to confirm his power. He doesn't need anybody to confirm that he is who he is. So it was a little amazing to me that there's actually criteria for healing miracles, um, faith miracles. So they they just operate in a whole nother realm. It's, it's so restrictive. But I want to believe when that person goes to the doctor and they show enough had cancer and the doctor gave them a, a week or two to live, and when they go back, all of the cancer is gone. Treatment, no treatment. I believe that's God. And I believe it's a miracle. When you get into that car accident, they got to get you out the car with the jaws of life. You ran into about 10 cars and you come out with two scratches. That's a miracle. Whether you deem it a big one or a small one, a miracle is a miracle. The fact that every person is on this line tonight is a miracle because you didn't have to make it through nine months in the womb and birth. You did not have to make it. It could have went another way. Every childbirth is the closest that a woman will come to death. The fact that your mama made it, miracle. The fact that you wake up every day and the blood is still running warm in your veins, miracle. You got the activity of your limbs, the articulation of speech, a reasonable portion of your health and strength, miracle. And when you like me over 50, when you get up and everything ain't cracking when you get out the bed, <laughs> miracle, you hear me? It's a miracle. 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 How about, miracle. Not miracle. Miracle. How about, how about, how about 30? Oh, then listen. Because <laughs> we be hurting too. Okay. <laughs> to God be the glory. A miracle. And there's even the, um, the argument that answer prayer is not a miracle. That's another argument that I found in my studies that people argue whether a prayer answered is a miracle. And I'm going to tell you the truth. If you're praying for an impossible situation, 
and the Lord brings you through, miracle. Argue, argue with me if you want. But if you are facing a situation that can't be humanly handled, it cannot be handled by any means, any stretch of the imagination. Any, if there's nothing that can be done and you turn around and it's fixed, Jesus fixed it, it's a miracle. Amen? Amen. Ain't, ain't, there's nothing to wonder about. God did it. God performed a miracle. Amen? So this is um, one of my um, one of my other favorite miracle stories. And I love it because Jesus is on his way to perform a miracle. And another miracle happens in the middle. Now, I wasn't dealing with the miracle in the middle because I wanted to talk about a miracle that showed obedience, that showed had a show of faith and a move of God. But you're going to be familiar with this. And this is the healing of Jairus' daughter. So then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. Now, you know the story. On the way to Jairus' house, the woman with the issue of blood reached out and touched his coat and was healed. She had a problem. She had some faith. And Jesus was there, who was God in the flesh. Miracle dried up the foundation of her 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 sickness dried it up she reached out and touched jesus he wasn't even trying to heal her jesus in the grand scheme jesus wasn't even thinking about this lady because she touched him and she touched him in faith and he had to figure out who touched him do you know what kind of faith that is that the lord knew that somebody with great faith touched him in such a way that it moved him. Amen, hallelujah. Back to the scripture. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead. They said, why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. This is where his show of faith and act of obedience is. Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not anyone follow, let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him, and he went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Amen to the glory of God. So you have here the faith, the act, the, the show of faith, because he still took Jesus to his house. He still took him there. You got the act of obedience because Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. And you know that he followed the act of obedience because the little girl was healed. She was healed. If they had not believed, if they did not have faith, the miracle would not have come to fruition. So you have to know that they believed what he said. And I want you to look at one more thing. It says, after he put them all out. So he put people out of that room. 
He put him out. And then he also said, don't tell anybody either. Because sometimes when a miracle is going forth, everybody can't be around you for you to receive it. Everybody can't be around you to receive it because you know what? They might put the verbal kibosh on it, okay? And then he told them, don't tell anybody. This great thing happens, the girl is healed, and Lord, you don't want us to tell anybody? Mm-mm. Because Jesus knew those that laughed probably still would not believe. They would have made up a story. They would have killed it. They would have put something in the air, something in the atmosphere that would have drawn something negative from that situation when that family got blessed and they received their daughter back. So we have to understand that when Jesus moved, when he operated in these miracles, these instructions that he gave had a purpose. And we might not always understand the purpose of him saying, don't say anything, don't tell anyone or get them out. But what we do understand is that these things had to be aligned in a certain way for the miracle to come forth. It had to be aligned in a way for the miracle to come forth. Amen. And what, what, what I love about Jesus and what I loved about the disciples when they performed the miracles, the people that were around them, it always amazed me how people laughed or people had negative comments, or even if they had heard about who Jesus was, some people had actually seen the things and they still doubted his power. They still doubted if he could do it again. They still doubted whether or not this, is this one going to work out? Is this the time it doesn't work? And I just, I love to um, read the Bible and see, like, after seeing so many things, why wouldn't you believe? After seeing so many things and hearing so many things, why wouldn't you believe? Amen. And I believe these miracles are still happening today. The miracles are still happening today, whether or not they are on grand scale, whether or not they are on a smaller scale. I believe that we're still seeing miracles every day. We're seeing miracles every day. And what I want to go over next week is things that miracles establish. Things that they establish. Uh, we're going to talk about miracle clusters and the different things that are established by the miracle clusters. Um, the, the reason Miracle Signs and Wonders is um, amazing to me is because the miracles defy nature. They can't be explained away by science, but it just encourages me that God is exactly who he says he is and he can do exactly what he says he can do and then some i believe that miracle signs and wonders exist to help increase our faith to sometimes help us with our unbelief it helps us with our unbelief and i think if we sit back and take a good look over our lives and around our family we could identify different miracles that have happened in our own lives there's different miracles, whether big, whether small, there's different miracles in our lives that we can identify with. So for next week, for miracle signs and wonders, I want you to identify a miracle in your life that you can share with the family. Also, if you have a question about a specific biblical miracle, that you want to discuss, send, send that to me or send it to um, Minister Bailey so um, we can research it and talk about it for next week. Uh, and I hope this has been helpful on some level um, to all of you. I hope that um, 
by next week's class, I'll have, I'll definitely have more to share because I really, um, I like the miracle, <laughs> the miracle cluster um, part of this study. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything they'd like to share? I um, wanted to say when you were talking about um, the people, um, when you were talking about the people um, not believing, um, not believing <clears throat> um, after they saw a miracle, you know, many times in the Bible, you see even in the Old Testament how God would deliver them, he would do something grand, then they would doubt him. Um, you know, we do the same thing today when God delivers us when he shows up for us we're excited we're happy we're grateful and then life hits us and we something that obstacle will get in your way and make you try to make you forget what mm -hmm. God did for you and it reminds me of um, Isaiah 43 that has been my theme scripture for the entire year but it reminds me of Isaiah 43 when um, God was telling the Israelites you know um, I delivered you from, you know, Pharaoh, like I took you through the Red Sea. And he was like, you know, but he's like, don't get stuck there. He's like, now forget about that. So forget the form of things. He, he, he reminds them that I did this great thing for you. I delivered you. Then he's like, all right, now forget about that. I'm doing a new thing. And I think sometimes we get caught up on the old miracle and the old blessing. And we think that's all God has for us. Exactly. But God is doing a new thing. I was, we was talking before we started class, uh, Letitia and I, we just like, God is getting ready to do a new thing. And so I just, you know, touch and agree for how God is going to bless her and, and the rest of us. You know, um, that scripture talks about how we're not going to be overwhelmed. You know, we're going to go mm -hmm. through. The waters, we not, we're not going to be overwhelmed by the waters. Nope. We're not, we're going to go through fire, but we're not going to be burned. Burn. Nope. Um, and, and he's going to be, he's with us because he loves us. He created us. And so he's reminding us of what he did for us before and, and just letting us know, proclaiming that he's going to do a new thing in our life, a new blessing. So uh, that's what we got to hold on to, you know, when we're looking for our new miracle. I'm, I'm expecting a miracle <laughs> you know i need a miracle from the lord i need some, him to do some things in my house i need him to do some things for my territory and expand my territory so i just believe god because it's, i can't do it i will not be able to do it mm -hmm. i don't care how many times i try to figure it out ain't gonna happen but um i'm not gonna get caught up in you know let the enemy lie to me like oh that's all god has for you this is it that's old like it's over with no it's not over with Mm -hmm. No matter how old you are, no matter your age, no matter what you, you thought that you should be somewhere at a certain point in life. No, he's mm -hmm. he's going to do it for you. So that's what we have to hold on to. And remember, um, uh, remember what he did, but don't get stuck there. Know that he's going to do even more. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Bailey. And that was my um, closing point for tonight. Expect miracles. Expect miracles. What he's done before. He can do again and then some. He came to give us life and to give it more abundantly. So why can't we live in the abundance? I believe God for the abundance. I cannot believe this is all this is all there is right now. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. No way. The Lord wants to bless his children in a marvelous way. And this is a time God has spoken to my spirit that when you ask for things in faith, you better be ready to receive them. He is moving so quickly, so quickly, that before you can finish getting things across your lips, before you can finish the prayer, God has already worked it out. He's already worked it out. He's already worked it out. I shared with um, Sister uh, Minister Bailey and some people on a prayer call a couple of weeks ago that I looked at the Lord and I was in like a tight, like a financial tight. And I was like, God, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I need a financial breakthrough. And Lord, I need it right now. I need it right now, Lord. I said, your servant is being faithful. We've been through some stuff, but God, I still believe you. I know you can still work a miracle 
by the time I said amen, I got a text on my phone saying there was money in my account. I could not even believe it. I had to pull over and give God glory because I couldn't even believe that he had blessed me in such a way. Not, I had not even finished. It was like, amen. I was on the end and that text came through. I said, come on, God. Come on, Lord. I've been praying about getting a job. I was like, Lord, you just show me where I need to do, who I need to talk to. And Lord, I'm going to give it my best. I prayed on Monday. I said, Lord, I said, I got this interview. I said, "Hmm, I don't know about it. I said, but you know, I said, and if you work it out, you work it out. You, you tell, you tell me what I need to do. I said, if I take, if if they're going to give me temporary work, I'm going to take temporary work. If they give me contract work, they'll give me contract work because they let me know they couldn't hire me from my original position, but they offered me a job, a full-time job wait, and created a title for me. Come on, Jesus. Come on. God is moving in a supernatural way. You have got to be sitting in a seat of expectancy. You have got to be praying and whatever you holding on to, loose here because God can't put nothing in your closed up fist. Let go of some stuff so God can put something in your open hands. I'm a witness. He will do it. He will perform those miracles that you've been waiting for, them houses that you've been waiting for, them cars you've been waiting for, them children getting right. He'll do it. Amen. The job you're looking for, the finances that you're waiting for, the opportunities that you're waiting for to open up, God can do it. He can do it in a supernatural, marvelous way but we got to be ready to receive it. We got to be open and ready to receive it. Yes, God. got to be ready to receive it. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. yes, yes, yes. Um, real quick, uh, before you um hang up. Um, yes, ma'am. You know, and, and I was sitting here and I was like, nah, I'm not going to talk about that. But, you know, the devil is a liar because when you, like you said, when God, you know, be, be, be ready for what you ask him for. You know, because, you know, you guys know I had shared, you know, the situation with the job and, you know, people tried to, uh, you know, drag my name through the mud, tried to, you know, tried to, you know, mess with my, you know, the thing that that used to feed my family, which is, you know, caregiving, you know. And um, I was like, well, maybe it's time for me to do something else. But God said, this is what I want you to do. You know what I'm saying? This is your gift. It's not what you want to do. This is what I want you to do, you know, and um, and I got a um and I and I had I had to share because Pastor had preached um on Wednesday at that church and 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 about the word about you know it's gonna work out, you know, and, and I got a call, you know, I had to share with her, you know, because when I rode with them, you know, me, her and Janai was together, and I never even talked about the losing the job, hadn't worked in two months and not, nothing like that. Hadn't even talked about it, but I had to share with her and thank her for that word of encouragement because the, um, that Thursday, I got a call from um, an agency that I used to work for because, you know, when I um, when the job ended last time, I told her, you know, keep me in file. You know what I'm saying? If you ever need me, you know, let me know. And um, she, she texted me and she asked me, was I working yet? I said, no. She said, are you looking? She said, I said, yes, (laughs) you know, and she said, "Um, how about, you know, instead of you being a caregiver, how about um, you get a a, um, work in the office and be my coordinator coordinator to hire the caregivers? I said, look at God, man. Look at God, you know, and um, if God be for you, (laughs) can no devil in hell destroy you. You That's know, and I'm just man. I'm I'm grateful. You know, everything is a process. You know, and we'll see where it go. But I'm I'm gonna keep you guys posted and just keep me in prayer, man. Because you know, my spirit had been low, but I know God is able. Listen, God is able. God is able, and He will do it. He will do it. It's it's no way, 
you in, you in a particular season, sis, and I'm telling you this because God is telling me this, you are in a particular season where you're about to see some things turn over in, oh God, Jesus, you're about to see some things turn over in your life that you thought would never be fixed. You're about to see some things turn over that you've been praying for for a long time. You've been praying for it for a long time, but God says it's your time now. It's your time now. You have your faith is in order. Your life is in order. You're in a place where you can receive it and give witness to it so that people will be blessed through your witness and your testimony of what's happening in your life right now. You thought you had a testimony before? Girl, the testimony you're about to have is going to just supersede that. You're going to open up your mouth and you're going to help people come to the Lord. Oh, thank you, God. You're going to help people come to the Lord. Trust me. Trust me and believe. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I, I love y'all. Y'all make my night. Y'all making my night for real. You really are. I love y'all. Um. Like I said, for next week, identify a miracle that's happened in your life that you want to share. And we're going to talk about miracle clusters and what they establish, miracle clusters and what they establish. And we'll even talk about a few modern day miracles that people argue are not miracles. Amen. 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 Uh, Minister Bailey, you want to pray us out? Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Reverend Phyllis for such an amazing lesson. Thank you all for um, listening in and chiming in. Um, thank you for sharing your stories. We appreciate all of them because it feeds all our faith. Um, let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we first just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for miracle signs and wonders. We thank you, Lord, that you're still moving, that you are not a dead God, but you're a God that's alive and living. Um, you're moving, Father God, and wherever you go, that's where we want to be. And so, Father, help us to expect miracles every day. God, we know that you will make a way out of no way. You'll do things that we just are beyond our, our human comprehension. And so, Father, we sit in the seat of expectancy for you to move. God, I thank you right now that you've been in this place. Father God, continue to cover our sister, Reverend Phyllis, Lord God, as she continues to carry us through this month. Father God, through miracles, signs, and wonders, I thank you, Father God, for the testimonies that were shared, Letitia and Phyllis and Tawana. Um, Father God, I thank you for all those that shared, and I even thank you for the miracles that were unspoken on tonight, because truth be told, just like your word says that the, is, we can't, uh, that they can't uh, record everything that Jesus did, Father God, we will be here forever testifying about what you've done in our individual lives. And so, Father, we thank you right now for how you're blessing us. I pray, Lord God, that whoever stands in the need of an immediate miracle, that you release it to them even now. God, we pray for our, our pastor, Reverend Tracy L. Brown. We ask that you cover her. We ask um, that you would just uh, cover every uh, pastor that of, of who's present tonight. Father God, cover all of our pastors. And Father, we just thank you. Uh, for who you are and God we even pray for miracles for our pastor pray for miracles for Ruth fellowship ministries and pray for miracles in our houses pray for miracles on our jobs Lord Father God miracles for our spouses miracles for our children oh Father God miracles for our families for our finances God we speak that word over everyone present today in Jesus name we pray amen 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 love y'all love you too